man. You're Americans of birds. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I am like fully on the Spencer and Alexander train, even though I think nice. it's gonna crash and burn and leave me like, <laughs> like very sad, fully on. So let's start with the end of episode four. He thinks his uncle Jacob is dead. His aunt Kara is like, you need to come home and help us get things together. The date of the letter, when was it written? Three months ago. Do you think he'd been fearing that this day would come? Do you think, how much had that been in his mind kind of before all of this? It's one of those things that's gone such a long time not acknowledging them in that way. And there's so much shame and there's so much guilt around it. Like most people do, you know, you've got that skeleton. You just want to bury it as deep as you can beyond just not reading the letters because of the war. But once it's gone that long, almost you don't want to know because it's too painful to know. And I do think that there is something in the back of his mind where he's kind of anticipating one of these letters is going to be someone's dead. Something happened. When she says to him, like, you got to read this, you know, and he knows, like, how oh, do you read it? I don't want to read it. Read it to me. And I don't even want to see the words on the page, you know? Talk about like the full human experience in like, you know, one evening, right? I mean, I feel like they have like highs and lows. That seemed like it might have been an intense interaction to have with Julia. Yeah, I think most of the interactions they have are intense. But that scene was challenging. It's a challenging scene to shoot. You're going on that roller coaster, you know, you are as the actor. I'm happy with the way that it ended up in the final cut. That 20 seconds you see him process that. You could, you get so much you can do with those 20 seconds. And it's, and you know it's going to end on those 20 seconds and we're going to break for a while. So it has to, it has to land in that way. So No it, pressure, I'm, 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 no I'm, pressure I'm, whatsoever. I'm, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's a walk in the park. It's easy. What can you tease about episode five? Like you said, we're not going to get it for a little while, but what can you tease about the next step for Spencer? I mean, is he immediately, yeah, I got to get home now. Yeah. Yeah, I can say that. I can say that he immediately takes action to getting home. Doesn't get easier for anybody. I can say that. Yeah, in classic Taylor Sheridan fashion. I don't ever want to feel like that again. For a long time, that was the only way I could feel. Until I met you. In classic Taylor Sheridan mode, um, every time Spencer says to Alex, I was broken and then I met you and now I'm doing so much better. I'm like, oh man, we are we are just loading the gun up here, right? Like you're just, yeah, so talk to me a little bit about, about that. It does seem a little bit like he is pegging a lot on their relationship and her and they're very much in that honeymoon period right now. But what can you tell me about as that relationship matures, how they may interact? The more they go through together, the deeper their bond becomes and they end up saving each other in a lot of ways and they force each other to rise to the occasion emotionally and physically in a lot of ways and that'll continue to unfold as the season as the season unfolds they were bonded by this initial connection that they they have a hard time understanding and that's quite enough she's engaged so and beyond their survival, and beyond him getting home, beyond the events that are taking place emotionally, they're both still trying to understand what it is about the other person that makes this such a crazy connection that they can't walk away from. There's a wonderful duality going on, you know, throughout the entire series where that's happening. Being in a good relationship is a very healing thing. But Spencer's also got a heck of a lot of trauma and PTSD that is still, oh, yeah. I would imagine, bubbling under there. Talk to me a little bit about how that might manifest as the season progresses. You know, I can say that you definitely don't want to kill the brother of a guy who's one of the most decorated War I heroes and who hunts things for a living. You don't want to rattle that cage. So many shows are cutting costs these days and there's like green screen and there's this and that. And then you are in the one where they're like, we're going to take you to Africa. Yeah. <laughs> Being in that must have done a lot to kind of set the stage for the character. I mean, you're in these like situations that the character would actually kind of be in. Yeah, you're there, you're flipping in a car, you're climbing a tree, you're doing, I mean, it's, doing, it's me doing all of it. It's all of us, it's both of us doing all of it. You never get that. You don't just don't get it anymore. And it does so much to not be in, not that there's anything wrong with Santa Clarita, but to not be in Santa Clarita or on a soundstage somewhere. Your imagination is really able to run wild because they take care of so many things for you. And I think your ability to be present just goes through the roof because you're there. You're not trying to imagine this and that and the other thing. Like, oh, you're there, you're driving, a, you're driving a period car and that is a herd of elephants walking in front of you and it's phenomenal.
What animal did you get the closest to? The elephants. Elephants. Spent a lot of time with those elephants. Yeah. When we flipped over in the car, the elephant charges us, the car flips over, and they're trying to get the elephant to charge so it can do that second hit just before I have to shoot it through the, the, the windshield. These elephants are just, they're, they're kind of slow, kind of do what they want. <laughs> and we're laying, we're laying in the car on the ground and in order to get the elephant over to us, they give us these uh, bunch of oranges. These guys have like a bucket of oranges. So he'd be like calling the elephant over with the oranges. Instead of running over, he just kind of like trot over. And then they've got these big hairy lips. <laughs> just, it's just great because you're in the middle of a scene trying to, you're like, <sighs> like holding this, trying to hold this emotion and this intensity. And then got this like, this massive elephant just saunters over. No, no. Slowly eating oranges out of your hand. What is it? You know, it was laying, literally laying under an elephant two feet from it, just looking up at it going, well, this is bonkers. Did you guys have, I know everyone had cowboy camp. Did you guys have like a subset of cowboy camp that was like Serengeti camp? Oh, no, no, no. Our, uh, no, we, we, were, we were in cowboy camp uh, with everybody else. And then because of the schedule, they all started shooting. And we remained in cowboy camp for Julie and I, uh, rode horses for a few weeks pretty much just us and other cast members would jump in when they had time but yeah we had we had again like six weeks on horses what was the thing that you were the best at and what was the thing you were the worst at at cowboy camp my horse's name was spanky and he's a lovely guy but he was a little temperamental you sort of end the day with a trot in a lineup and you begin the day in a trot in a lineup and we have to sort of swing our horses around so we stack side by side you know you come in like this and Spanky would not, just wouldn't do it. He would never turn. He would just, the guy in the mind of his own, you, I mean, I'd be like loping pretty hard. And he'd go, no, I'm done. And he would just beeline it towards the gate. And then you're like, you, you can't, there's nothing you can do about that. And you're like, Spanky, come on, come on, Spanky. And you're like, no. And they're like, no, you just gotta do, I'm like, no, I'm doing, I'm doing what you just gotta do. But he just ain't doing it because he's done. I love riding fast. I'm good at that. Can't wait to do that. Uh, but it, in the moment, I, I was pretty terrible at getting Spanky to sidestep or listen to me, really. Did um, it add any insult to injury that he was named Spanky and not like Thor or like uncontrollable, like Thunderbolt? <laughs> yeah, or yeah, yeah. 